Shaders, huh? It is the most powerful tool that can take your game visuals on a different level. Almost every good game use shader. So why don't you use it? Is it hard because it involves a lot of math? It is a bit complex, but still there are many things and effects that are super cool and easy to understand. So in this video, we are going to understand the shader for flashing the sprite, grayscaling a sprite, moving the background, controlling the brightness, contrast and saturation, and at last the blur effect. I've already made two videos till now about shader. I will recommend you to watch the grass motion video where I'll explain the basics of shader. So let's get started. This is a very simple shader and mostly used to make the player wide indicating a hit or a damage. For this you first need to go to the player sprite and under the material add new shader material and then select shader. Now the first line will be shader type canvas item. This tells Godot that we are working in 2D. Now since we are working on color of the sprite, that's why we will work on frame and function. After that, we first need to get the image so that we can change its color. To get the image, we use texture function that take a texture and a UV. Here the texture keyword represent our image and UV tell us how to read it. Because of UV, we only get to see the visible part of the image and not the transparent area. Now let's first create the white color. We know the color is made up of red, blue and green and to make a color white, we have to set one in red, blue and green. Now there is a fourth parameter alpha, so we are gonna use the alpha from the original image. If we don't do this, everything will be white, including the transparent area of the image. Now instead of directly putting the white color into our image, we use the mix function to put a certain amount of white color into it. In the mix function, we tell it to mix this color into this image by this amount. If I put 0 here, there will be no white color. And if I put 1, the image will become fully white. Now I will create a uniform variable with a range 0 to 1 and put it in the mix function. And now I can move this slider with either animation player or with GD script. Grayscale can be useful in many cases. Like if you have a shop and some item are locked, you can turn them grayscale. Or maybe use it to turn the entire scene grayscale when the player dies. Similar to what we have in GTA 5. So achieving grayscale is actually simple than it looks like. We have to do the same thing as we have done in creating the flash effect. There we have taken the original image, then create the white color and then mix the white color to the original image as much as we want. Now in the grayscale, we just have to create a grayscale color instead of white and mix it with the original image. So to create the grayscale color, we have to find the mean value of red, blue and green, which means take the red, blue and green, add them together and then divide it by 3 and we get the grayscale value. So let's quickly write our shader code. Again, we have to use the fragment function because we are working with colors. Then first, we get the original image using the texture function. Then we calculate the mean value by adding red, blue and green and dividing it by 3.0. Remember to use the floating value because integer don't work here. Now we create a grayscale color by putting mean value in red, blue and green and also use the alpha from the original image so that we don't fill the transparent areas. Now we just use the mix function to mix the grayscale color to our original image by the given amount of quantity and at last create a uniform variable to set the value of the quantity from the inspector. And with that done, we can now control the quantity of the grayscale from the code or the animation player. A long time ago, I made an endless runner game in which I want to move the road vertically. But instead of actually moving the road, I use shader to move it. Since shader work on GPU, thus it reduces a little amount of pressure on CPU. Similar to this, you can also apply shader to move it horizontally instead of actually moving the sprite. Again, to do this, we are going to use the fragment function. First, we get our original image using the texture function and assign it to the color. Now UV determines how to read the texture, so we have to change UV in order to make it moving. So above it, I will create a vector2 called myUV and assign it to UV. And inside the texture function, instead of writing the capital UV, I will use myUV. Now let's break the UV into X and Y and put it in the vector2. Now to move it vertically, we add time in UV.Y. Now to change its direction, subtract it instead of adding. Similarly, if you want to move it horizontally, add or subtract time in uv.x. Now to increase this speed, we can multiply it by some bigger number. So instead of multiplying a particular number, I will multiply a speed variable and create a uniform variable speed which range from 0 to 5. And with that done, we can now control the speed of the motion from the code or animation player. 
I don't think I have to tell the use cases for this shader. You can really use it in every single game of your. Again, this code is very simple once you understand the logic behind it. Now let's first understand how the brightness works. So when you reduce the brightness of an image, it becomes black. And as you increase it, the image starts to appear. So if you observe closely, we are mixing the image in the black color. So as you might have guessed it, for brightness, we will use the mix function to mix our image into black color. Now you might also think that in the mix function, we set the quantity between 0 and 1. By moving it from 1 to 0, we decrease the brightness. And by putting it 1, here we only see our original image. Then how do we increase the brightness? Well, to increase it, we have to increase the range greater than 1. I think increasing the range to 3 would be enough. So now from 1 to 3, the brightness will increase. Similarly, when we reduce the contrast of an image, the image becomes grey. So for contrast, we will add our image into a grey color. And when we reduce the saturation of the image, the image becomes grayscale. So for saturation, we mix our image into grayscale. Now let's quickly write the code. First I'm going to create three variable slider. Control the brightness, contrast and saturation through the inspector. Now inside the fragment function, we first get the original image using the texture function. Now for the brightness, we are going to mix our image into black color. To create the black color, you can write 0 in vector 3. That will be equal to vector 3 0, 0, 0. And for the mix amount, we will use the brightness variable. At last, store the image with the brightness back into the image variable. Now for the saturation, we will mix our image with the gray color. And for the gray color, you can put 0 0.5 in RGB values. Again, for the mix amount, I will put the contrast variable. Now to change the saturation, we have to mix it with grayscale value. And at last, store it in the image variable. Now we have already seen it how to get the grayscale value. So first calculate the mean value and then put it in R, G and B to get the grayscale. Now we use the mix function to mix our image with grayscale. And for the mix amount, I will put our saturation value. And similarly, we store it back to our image variable. Now at last, we set the color to our modified image. Now you may wonder why I have put the values of brightness, saturation and contrast back to the image variable. Well, it is because we want to apply all these effects at the same time. In contrast, we are using the image which is already brightened. Similarly, in saturation, we are using image which is already brightened and contrasted. And when we set it to color, all three effects have been applied to it. So that's it for this shader. You can now control this effect from the slider in the inspector and animate it with GDScript or animation player. Creating the blur effect is the simplest among all, but we have to apply the blur effect on the color rec node. So first add the color rec node to your scene and now increase the size to cover the entire area. Now we will add the shader code to it. So first we are going to take the image from the texture function and assign it to our color variable. Now normally we use texture and UV in this function, but this time we are going to use screen texture and screen UV. With the screen texture, we get what's under this sprite and with regular texture, we get our own sprite. That's why my color rec node become fully transparent because I'm getting whatever behind this area. Now coming back to the texture function, there's one more parameter that you can specify and that is blur amount. So zero means no blur. And as you increase the number, the blur amount will also increase. And finally, I can create a uniform variable to get the blur amount from the inspector and then use it inside the texture function. And that's it. You can cover up the entire area and make the whole scene blurred. Similar to this, you can also put the color correction shader in the color rec node and then use the screen texture and screen UV instead of regular texture and UV. This will apply color correction to the entire scene at once. So that's it for today. I've tried to explain all the basics of shader that you will use often. Feel free to experiment with the code because the more thing you change it, the better you understand it. Also, if you still find it difficult or don't feel interested in learning shader, then you can just go to godoshader.com and there you will find hundreds of amazing shader that you can directly use it in your game. If you find this video helpful, then don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any doubt, then write down in the comment section and I will try to solve it. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.